Good morning. Today is the Reverend Martin Luther King Jr. holiday. On this day, we celebrate a man who accomplished a great deal in his life. He is best known for fighting for a cause that was just, civil rights for African Americans during a time of tremendous discrimination. What makes his efforts extraordinary is the way he fought for these rights. He did so in a way that was noble in his use of nonviolent tactics and his refusal to hate his enemies. Dr. King not only fought for civil rights for African Americans, but for the rights and dignity of all people. Other groups that face discrimination also benefited from the rights gained by the civil rights movement he was a leader of. He also took on other causes during his life, such as calling for an end to the war in Vietnam and calling for efforts to end poverty. In these causes, he was fighting for people of all races, ethnicities, and backgrounds. Today's holiday is a celebration of what Dr. King accomplished. His life provides a shining example of what one person can do when they commit themselves to serving others. The Civil Rights Movement was not just a movement involving leaders like Martin Luther King Jr. In many cases, it was a movement of young people who hoped to secure a better future for themselves and their people. The following are examples from the Civil Rights Movement of what young people endured and accomplished while serving others. One of the first events in relation to the Civil Rights Movement that students became actively involved in was the integration of Little Rock Central High School in 1957. Nine students challenged the segregation that still existed there despite the 1954 Supreme Court case, Brown v. the Board of Education, which ruled that segregation in public schools was illegal. These nine students faced threats and violence and were only able to successfully attend school there when President Eisenhower sent in troops to escort these students daily to school. These brave students endured a lot and were able to successfully end segregation in their school which began the process of ending segregation in other places. Sit-ins were an important part of the nonviolent strategy of civil disobedience and mass protests within the civil rights movement. The first major sit-in protest of the movement took place at the Woolworths department store in Greensboro, North Carolina in 1960. Waves of African American students were arrested at lunch counters in the store after they were refused service and refused to leave their seats. The store eventually ended its policy of segregation. This successful protest led student groups across the South to organize other protests. The most important of these groups was the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee, or SNCC. Local buses were slowly integrated in the South following the successful Montgomery bus boycott. However, segregation still existed on interstate buses and in bus terminals. Freedom Riders descended on the South both black and white to challenge this in 1961. These young people faced violence every step of the way, including the bombing of a bus, beating at stops along the way, and numerous arrests. The U.S. government was forced to provide protection for the riders as the protests moved to airports and train stations. The Interstate Commerce Commission declared to end segregation in transportation facilities. Segregation had been successfully challenged in a high school in 1957, yet by 1962, college campuses remained segregated in the South. James Meredith decided to try to break this barrier by applying for admission to the University of Mississippi. After being denied admission twice by the university, he filed suit. After his case was won in the U.S. Supreme Court, he was finally admitted to the college. Violence and riots broke out on campus, and again federal troops were sent to make sure Meredith could attend classes. Two years later, he graduated, and afterwards he continued to take part in the civil rights movement. Young people often took part in civil rights marches in the South, as they did not support their families with their jobs. If they were arrested, their families would not suffer due to lost wages. During civil rights protests in Birmingham, Alabama in 1963, Commissioner of Public Safety Eugene Bull Connor uses fire hoses and police dogs on black demonstrators. These images of brutality, which were televised and pub published wildly, were instrumental in gaining sympathy for the civil rights movement around the world. These images of brutality, which were televised and published widely, were instrumental in gaining sympathy for the civil rights movement around the world. 
Another event that young people played a major role in during the Civil Rights Movement was Freedom Summer. It was a campaign launched in June 1964 to attempt to register as many African American voters as possible in Mississippi, which had historically excluded most blacks from voting. Most of the leadership and financing for the summer project came from SNCC. Additional volunteers recruited on college campuses across the country also braved the routine violence committed by police and others in Mississippi to help register black voters and provide other services to their communities. From these examples, it can be seen that young people played an incredibly important role in the civil rights movement. They made huge sacrifices to support a cause they strongly believed in. Some gave their time, some gave their energies, and some gave their lives, but in the end, segregation and the blatant violence and racism of that era was defeated. Young people played a major role in this. Dr. King's widow, Coretta Scott King, wrote an essay describing the importance of celebrating Martin Luther King Jr. Day. She emphasized volunteer public service as a key element of this holiday. Here's what she had to say. The Martin Luther King Jr. holiday celebrates the life and legacy of a man who brought hope and healing to America. We commemorate as well the timeless values he taught us through his example. The values of courage, truth, justice, compassion, dignity, and service that so radiantly defined Dr. King's character and empowered his leadership. We call you to commemorate this holiday by making your personal commitment to serve humanity with the vibrant spirit of unconditional love that was his greatest strength and which empowered all of the great victories of his leadership. And with our hearts open to hit this spirit, we can indeed achieve the beloved community of Martin Luther King Jr.'s dream. The students at Waterford High School have shown a strong commitment to serve humanity. In the past year, our classmates have been involved in a tremendous number of service projects. Among these are the following. The Student Council conducted a blood drive and the March Madness basketball game which raised money for fighting MS. The Chase Club also conducted a blood drive and worked at the Lions Club Chicken Barbecue, Waterford's Fall Harvest Day, the Special Needs Halloween Dance, the NAMI Bike Ride, the USO Fine Arts Dinner, and breakfast with Santa. And they also adopted a family for Christmas by buying them presents. The choir also sponsored two families for Christmas. The food classes made cookies to go with holiday meals for a food pantry. FFA adopted a highway for cleanup and a family for Christmas, donated food to the needy, conducted the petting zoos and ecological projects, and volunteered to help at churches and at nursing homes. Students Against Destructive Decisions held Red Ribbon Week. The Diversity Club ran the Toys for Tots collection and a fundraiser for Japan Tsunami Relief. National Honor Society sponsors Relay for Life to raise money for cancer research and the Academic Awards Food Night Drive. And the Library Club raised money for Books for Soldiers program. Furthermore, several UHS students took part in service-related Eagle Scouts and Boy Scouts projects and many volunteered to tutor younger students in the elementary schools and through recreation programs, including the LEGO Robotics team. These are great efforts, but more can always be done to help others. Martin Luther King Jr. gave his life serving others. There are no such dangers for you if you choose to serve others with your time and efforts. Here at Waterford Union High School, we would like to celebrate today's holiday and Black History Month, not just by remembering this incredible man, but by calling for the students here to do something to serve others. During the second week of the second semester, a food drive will be held to collect non-perishable and non-expired foods. Collection will take place each morning in your first period class. The class that collects the most food per student will receive a free breakfast. The collected food will be taken to the Racine Food Bank, which supplies food pantries for the needy throughout Racine County. Through the donation of food for the needy, we can celebrate the life of Martin Luther King in a meaningful way, a way he would have appreciated, by serving and helping others. <laughs>